The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. With so many people living longer, the fear of outliving your money becomes a reality for many of us. Will I be a financial burden? Will I outlive my money? How will I be remembered? My name is Neil Himmelstein, president of Main Street Planning Group. Please contact me by visiting MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631-647-4694. I will introduce you to strategies that will guarantee you will not outlive your money, that can guarantee you will not be a burden on your loved ones. Through a collaborative approach, we will uncover solutions that offer tax-efficient strategies, lifetime income, and legacy planning. Choice, organization, direction, and education. That is the code we stand behind. Contact MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631-647-4694. And listen to me every Friday at 3 p.m. as I host the Main Street Code for Financial Success right here on 1039 LI News Radio. to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. I'm your host, Neil Himmelstein. You know where to reach me, 631-647-4694 or my website, MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. We talk about code. That's choice, organization, direction, and education. And we work with hundreds of advisors across the United States. And one of the things that we've been talking about the last several weeks is the long-term care crisis. And we have such a crisis and such a need for taking care of ourselves and, and, and our parents and our brothers and siblings when they need custodial care in the home or away. And today, we are very fortunate to have a special guest with us, Carol Golden. Carol, say hi. Hi. Uh, Carol just came out with a book regarding having that conversation, uh, How Not to Tear Your Family Apart, Simple Steps to Kickstart Critical Conversation, Help Your Family and Aging Parents, and Planning a Financial Stable Future. Carol has got many, many degrees. I don't want to list them all out all her letters. It's like uh, the Google alphabet here. Uh, but Carol is a trailblazer in the area of long-term care and, and not only helping the insurance carriers uh, develop products, but also in explaining the product to consumers for many, many years. She's one of my mentors in the area of long-term care insurance, and she's also devoted two decades to the field of extended and long-term care planning as the executive director of NAFA across the United States when limited and extended long-term care planning center. And again, a true expert and a true mentor to me. And Carol, if you could just tell me your story a little bit about how this issue became so important to you and your family. And then just tell me your story a little bit for everybody. Well, first, Neil, thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it. For me... I was doing financial planning. I was living in New York at the time. And um, one of my clients came in, and I looked at him, and, and he looked terrible. So I asked him to sit down, and he explained to me that his wife, who was only 53, had had a stroke. Oh, boy. And in order to help her, he was renovating their home with, ramps and he had someone coming in to help dress her, etc. And it quickly started to blow up the entire financial plan that we had so painstakingly put together. It kept bothering me that there wasn't anything that I had at least looked at to help him. So that led me to looking at long-term care options, what what could I have done? And um, ultimately, it led me into uh, working with three different carriers and two different large brokerage uh, distributors, because I really wanted to understand how complex is this? Why is it so hard to bring this topic up? And it still is a difficult topic to bring up. And so I decided to... Um, become part of a, a conference that had eight different tracks dealing from 
creating a product, pricing a product, all the way to how do we get claims done efficiently. And um, then when I joined NAPA, I started to ask sponsors who were experts in areas that I'm not an expert in. Right. So that we could service um, advisors and, and really offer them the information they need. Ultimately, it read, led to the book. Gotcha. So one of the things that you talk about is, is the, jugg- the juggling act, the juggling act between parents, children, grandparents, uh, and grandchildren. And tell me how that all plays into the world of how does that relate to me uh, or, 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 or our listeners? Mm-hmm. Well, because longevity has become so prevalent, we are living longer, but unfortunately, in some cases, not necessarily so healthy that we can remain independent. And what I have observed is, like in the book, there is a main character. She's employed. And then when her parents need help, it starts to interfere with her ability to carry on in her job. And her children, um, who also have grandchildren, or rather have ch- children, they start to notice that she's skipping meals, she is always running, doing, and not taking care of herself, and they get concerned. And for that reason, I think for advisors as well as consumers, this is a multi-generational issue. No one winds up with care in a vacuum. So I tried in the story to show how many different options there are to deal with the issue. But most of us are not great planners. So when we go to an advisor, um, I thought it would be good for the advisor to kind of have overviews of the different options as well, working kind of as a team, what works best for this family. And in the book, the family actually involves a very good friend because sometimes it doesn't matter how you define family. They are going to be who is going to help you have the most comfortable and meaningful life as you age. Absolutely. And it's not only an emotional situation uh, between family members, but it's a financial situation when you talk about the juggling act. Um, I know, you know, today, you know, growing up, it was like, oh, everybody, well, we're talking two generations ago, really, where everybody stayed in the same hometown and parents and grandparents lived together. And that may be the case in some areas and parents. But today, because of jobs, because of opportunities, because of costs, because of taxes, people are living all over the country. Uh, My children live in Denver and Hawaii. Uh, You know, if they have children, you know, you know, my brothers and I lived in five different states, five brothers, and my parents lived in Baltimore. So when the care was needed, uh, all of a sudden it's like, let's huddle up and deal with it rather than if we had planned 20 years earlier, we would have a strategy or some solutions before we created problems. Too true. And as I said, for me, the the financial impact on my client was terrible. And because we waited so long, we didn't have the kind of options that we might have had if we said, okay, let's do some planning in advance. As a matter of fact, in the story, when Jody, the main character, gets her parents settled, which, thank goodness, they were able to do that. She says to her husband, what about us? Do we really want to do this to our children? Because the sandwich generation has turned into a club sandwich. We've got grandparents, you, we've got children, and then children's children. So if, if she's taking care of her parents, the financial, the financial impact on her ability to continue to fund um, maybe a 529 for her children, maybe her own retirement plan, uh, uh, just regular savings and lifestyle. And if you're not prepared, then sometimes you have to put money aside and as an emergency fund, and it doesn't earn anything. 
So there's all kinds of complications. So what I discovered was it's just a really tough topic to bring up to people. Absolutely. So I thought I put a book together and said, you know, here's step one, step two, step three. It doesn't matter if you do step two before step three or any of that. It gives an advisor and it gives a consumer a framework to talk about it. Now, you may want to say, oh, I relate to Jody or I relate to Jody's parents. Carol, we're we're, we're going to go on break and, and we'll be back in a few minutes. You're listening to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. And my guest today is Carol Golden. And we'll be right back. To the Main Street Code for Financial Success. You're listening to your host, Neil Himmelstein. I can be reached at MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or 631-647-4694. My special guest today is Carol Golden, who's going to tell you about her book that she just came out with, which I believe is available on Amazon, and we're going to get to that. And prior to the break, Carol was talking about the sandwich generation of dealing with not only our kids, and our parents at the same time, but the grandkids and how everything comes into play without proper planning. Uh, I kind of want to take us, Carol, into a different direction now, and I want to talk about this crisis that we have about long-term care, and it's such a crisis for, for you know, the middle class and everything else because we are living longer, as, as you had said, and because we still have these impairments and we need help taking care of ourselves in the home, but also it's a drain on the government on, on, on Medicare and not only Medicare, on Medicaid, which is the leading provider of insurance in the United States where you have to impoverish your assets to get care. And what does that do for your future generations? Carol, could you comment on that? Yes, I'd be happy to. You know, um, we're in a... In the world of specialists, we're very aware of um, recapture and a family um, has look back periods. So it, just impoverishing parents isn't, isn't that easy. There's lots of loopholes. Uh, so you need to discuss that as an option with your advisor. But the government itself now agrees with everybody uh, in the industry, that we are at a critical stage. So in the state of Washington, they put together a um, long-term care public-funded program called the Washington Cares Trust. Um, the, the problem is uh, it garnishes salaries. And people like to have what we were discussing, options. Um, if you're working and you're, you know, a 30-year-old and they move Social Security full retirement age out, as many of us expect them to do, you, you could be paying in for some 40 years. And so it's very important at this point to say, what, what do I want to do to prepare? Do I really want the state to be the one to decide where I can go, decide what I'm going to have? As we know... Um, control over your own situation is important. And giving it up to the state, uh, giving up a certain amount of money might be right for some people, but don't you think, Neil, we should be deciding if that is a program that we want to participate in or what are our options? Uh, And absolutely. Uh, And and what happens if we move out of the state or we move with our children or, or, you know, and, you know, we've been Part of or Washington never, State. If you never use it, right. And then we move. And then we've paid into something that we're never going to utilize. And and the plan is insufficient, but at least it's being addressed. I think it's a positive move that, that at least the state is addressing it. And it's being addressed nationally as well because Medicaid costs the government serious amount of money. And that's really 
the ultimate option to impoverish yourself is to go on Medicaid. And it costs both the states and the federal government a lot of money. And I think that we need, and, and I've been working on, and I know you have for far longer, actually, on, on getting together with the federal government and the state governments and the insurance companies and finding solutions. And f the key is to find a solution and to plan for it and to have that conversation. And I have to warn everyone out there. You know, I work with hundreds of financial advisors. If your financial advisor is not bringing this topic up to you in any of your planning, I don't care if you're 30, 40, 50, talking about your parents, talk, and not bringing the topic up, please have them call me at Main Street Planning Group, and I will educate them on having the, not only the conversation, but help devise some solutions for you and your family, if not just for you, for your parents, for your grandparents, this is such a crisis, and to hold a blind eye and wait until your family member has a stroke or has an incident or is driving to the store and forgets how to get home from five minutes away and keeps driving, then you're going to have a crisis on your hand, and it's very common. What are the? I, I hate to keep throwing numbers out there, but the percentages of people that need long-term care, and I'll let Carol tell you the numbers. This is unrehearsed, everything else. What is the odds that you will need some sort of care in your home or custodial care or nursing home? What are the odds? Well, for a couple, it can be as high as 70%. So I have to congratulate you, Neil, because I know that you have been working um, with Congressman uh, Swazi uh, discussing his federal proposal. We have 15 states that NAFA has uh, information and obviously uh, working with to discuss what kind of a state support program. Now, obviously, we'd like it to work well with the insurance options that are out there, either at the front end or the back end. But when the government starts having multiple proposals and committees forming and discussions, then I have to say, Neil, I agree with you. If a financial advisor isn't discussing this, they would do well to call you because you have immersed yourself in trying to find out what kind of proposals are there? How would it really serve the financial advisor who wants to discuss this, the consumer who needs to discuss this? Because the one thing I learned in interviewing a lot of people before writing the book was preparation makes a huge difference. Those who have prepared say to me, well, I'm not putting my children through it. I, I I worked something out with my advisor. Right. And those that don't have it often don't know how to start the conversation. Um, I, I think, Neil, you're right. Everyone should start the conversation. It's okay that you're not well-versed in it. Call Neil. He's well-versed in it. Right. And that would be my best advice to people. Find somebody who feels comfortable uh, that's why in the book it's a story. Maybe right. step into the shoes of one of the characters. If you don't want to talk about yourself immediately, use that. Just say, I don't know. I have a client who. Right. Or I went to my financial planner and they suggested X. And, and, my, and my big issue is, is that many people think they have a financial planner and all he is is maybe a stock job. I, I don't want to be accusatory. But I think you need specialists, okay? But specialists need to work with team members who know other areas. It's great that you have a specialist that's investing your stocks and bond portfolio. But at the end of the day, you need insurance specialists to complement everything. Carol, I know we're running out of time. Where can they buy your book? Well, it's, it's available in several places. Uh, obviously, it's available on Amazon, but it's also um, available on Google Books and other outlets. Um, hopefully, uh, some libraries will be picking it up. But there's both an ebook and a print book uh, available um, at Google. And so I'm hoping that people decide that this is something that 
they and their advisor uh, should talk about. But before we go, Neil, I, I do want to uh, pick up on a point you just made. You go to an investment person or uh, someone who is very adept at 401ks or at 529 plans or college planning, and they're usually specialists. Well, why would you not want someone who at least starts the conversation with you and has access to the kind of information that can help? Absolutely. Thank you, Carol. We are running out of time. And I, listen, it's a gorgeous day here on Long Island. We're so happy to have our guest, Carol Golden. You've been listening to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. If you want to reach me or have any questions whatsoever, 631-647-4694. Visit my website, MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. Have a gorgeous day. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks again. And Carol, thank you for being part of this great show. Thank you, Neil. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors.